This is John Cressman with MonkeyUncle.com, and we are continuing our Game Salad platformer tutorial series. Today is episode 9. We will con be continuing our discussion about enemies and enemy patrol patterns. Today we're going to be talking about flying enemies, which are slightly different than the ground-based enemies we were working with before. And we're going to show you some different types of patterns, um, patrolling methodology as well. So if you've been following along with the tutorial series, your project should be at the current state. Uh, if not, you may download the project files from monkeyuncle.com. And I would recommend downloading Platformer Tutorial Template 008 and following along with us at this point. So if you are at this point, what you want to do is file, save as, and save this as Platformer Tutorial 009. Now last time we had some crashes. Again, there's a new version of Game Salad out, so unfortunately there's not much I can do about that. Um, every time they brought a new version, there's always the risk of putting some bugs in it. And that's one of the reasons I recommend that you always save often, and we'll be doing that uh, as we go through the tutorial. So we want to go to our actor section, and we want to create a new actor. I'm going to call this enemy three and like the other enemies we're going to drag him into the enemies tag so go ahead and save your project open up the enemies first thing we're going to do is go down to physics and we're going to change his density his friction and his bounciness to zero and we're going to give him a fixed rotation and we're going to leave movable checked. Now we're going to animate this one as well so I want you to go to your images library and we're going to go into our platformer graphics. Now if you're just coming in with us um, you can download these from kenny.nl it's the platformer redux package. Now he does have an enemy section here and we're going to go since this is a flying enemy we're going to go with the B. So I want you to drag the B graphic and the B move graphic. Okay, So we're going to have both of those graphics over there. And then once they're in your image library, go ahead and drag one of them up, doesn't matter which one, into your image area. Now once you've done that, go ahead to size, and we're going to change him to 64 by 64. And let's go ahead and save that. Now we're going to be creating a, a number of real attributes. We're going to be creating four of them. The first one we're going to name start x. The second one will be end x. The third one will be start y and end y. Then we're going to create a new one, and it's an integer, and we're going to rename it speed. And we're going to give him a speed of 100 as well. So because it's a flying, we can move not only along one axis, like the X, like we do for the others, but we can also move along the Y axis too. So we're going to show you how you can do that um, in a little bit later. But for now, we don't need to add gravity because, again, he's flying, so no real need. He defies gravity. So what you do want to do is you want to set his behavior. So right off the bat, we're going to give him a change attribute. We're going to call this initial speed. We're going to change that, and we're going to say if I'm going to set enemy. Sorry, motion linear velocity x to self speed. All right. And now we're going to go ahead and add a rule. We're going to do this much like we did the other one. We're going to add two conditions. And we're going to say both when attribute, the first one is when attribute position x is greater than, so this will be the end 
x. So when it's greater than self end x. And the other condition is when self position x is less than self end x. Now remember what we did before, we changed this to any and we're going to use the same methodology we used before which is setting self linear velocity x to negative parenthesis enemy motion linear velocity x in parenthesis and again what that's going to do is it's going to change basically change direction it's going to set it to the opposite direction now the only thing we need to do here is change this to any okay maybe you haven't already and we're going to call this horizontal rules all right let's file and save that now remember with our other graphics we animated them so we're going to come and animate this one as well now he's going to fly fast, so I want to move him more like 14 frames per second. And again, we're going to unclick the restore actor when done. I'm going to switch to the images library. I'm going to drag the two different frames into the animate. And then the only other thing we need to do, just to make it consistent with the others, is I'm dragging over a change attribute already, but I'm going to highlight it and click create rule and when I do that notice how this change attribute automatically went into the rule so this rule is going to be called change direction or actually I'm going to say change image direction and this is the same rule we used before and that is when attribute enemy motion linear velocity x is greater than zero then we're going to change self graphic flip horizontally to true remember because he's facing left otherwise we're going to change it to false Okay. I'm going to file and save. I'm going to go to scene. We're going to put our little flying actor. Now this is what we set up before with the worm. Now he's going to go off, but what we want to do is we want to drag on our flying enemy we're going to set him to patrol the top of this area. So let's go ahead and click on him and we're going to get the start X. Expand position. There's 382. And now we're going to go back. We're going to move him. And we're going to click on him again. And this time, 641, that's going to be our index. Now, right now, we're only doing the X movement. So I'm going to go ahead and test that. And as you can see, there goes our little B. And off he goes. And he didn't bother stopping, not at all. So let's go back and look at our rules and see why he didn't. Let's also, really quickly, take a look at the scene and make sure that he's on the right layer. He's not, so let's move him down to background. So now let's go into our enemy and let's take a look and see what where we might have gone wrong. So we say when self position x is greater than index and less than index. So as you can see, I made a click error 
this should be less than start x. So now if we watch, the worm goes off, but the bee keeps flying. Now if I hop down here and I just sit here, that bee is going to sting me and I die. And he just keeps merrily going back and forth. And that's what we want. We want, and you could certainly leave it this way, but you could also go in back in. We can also give them a little bit of movement on the horizontal, on the vertical axis as well. So what I can do, I'm going to duplicate this horizontal rules. Okay. I'm going to change it to vertical rules. And it's going to be very similar but I'm going to change this to when position y is greater than self and y and when position y is less than start y. So basically it's we're doing exactly the same thing we just changed the x to the y and that's vertical. Now we do need to come in and change the linear velocity. So we're going to say motion linear velocity y is, we're just going to highlight this and delete it, and we're going to insert motion linear velocity y. So that's going to reverse whatever direction it's going vertically up and down. Now to get this moving, we also need to come and duplicate this rule. So we're going to change this name to speed x and then this to initial speed y. And the only other thing we're going to do is change this to self motion linear velocity y. So basically what we've done is we've duplicated the rules so that it now applies to the x and the y axis. So now I can move up and down, almost like in a zigzag pattern. So let's file save. I'm going to hit home. We're going to go to our scene. And now the only other thing we have to do is we have to change. We have to now establish a start y. And that's going to be the lowest coordinate. So this is going to be our low coordinate, 421. So start y will be 421. Then let's go back and we'll move them up a little bit. And 437 will be our end y. So let's save it. And we're going to preview. And now see, he goes back, he hops up and down. And there you have a flying enemy. And of course, you could make him actually fly all the way over. In fact, why don't we do that? Let's go to actor. I'm sorry. Let's go to scene. Let's move him all the way over here. We're going to click on him. That's going to be his new index. This will be 921. And see, he starts all the way over there comes to this platform and he'll actually fly across this area which is going to make it a lot more difficult for the player to ride across. And now you've made a flying enemy that can go not only horizontally but vertically. We, if we wanted to we could leave him so he just flies up and down. Or we could give him a huge pattern have him go in very large Z, V formations. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this. Again, this is John Cresto at monkeyuncle.com. You can download the template that goes along with this tutorial from our website. That's monkeyuncle.com. And don't forget, the graphics are from Kenny, K-E-N-N-E-Y dot N-L. We'll see you next time on episode 10.